Welcome everyone to another episode of Play It Through an Honest Edition. It's Marble Madness, brought to us by Milton Bradley and Rare. Marble Madness is a port of the arcade classic by Atari. The game features an isometric view as you play as a marble traveling through many courses with some very intense and high-speed arcade action. Your job, however, is very simple. Get the marble to the end of the level in one piece before time runs out. However, there are many different pitfalls, enemies, and other things getting in your way preventing you from doing so. So here we go with Marble Madness for the NES. When we start the game, you can play one or two player. We're going to be playing one player and then entering our name. It's funny that you actually enter it at the beginning instead of after you end up completing a run. Now you can play two different control schemes, 90 degree or 45 degree, and I play usually with 90 degree, but this is of course personal preference. I love the soundtrack in this game. The rare version of the music, which is also featured in the arcade version, I feel is spectacular, especially the first few levels. Now the very first level is just a beginner's course. It's very easy to guide your marble and it's just used really the practice. Play this level a few times until you get the hang of how the marble controls. It's all about momentum and weight. When we make it to the second level, this is where things really ramp up, as you'll have ramps to move the marble slowly down, and have to avoid these annoying enemies that will fly up into the air and try to land on top of you. If you fall off too high of a ledge, you'll hear a little bit of a screaming sound from the marble itself, I guess, and you'll also become dizzy. The same thing will happen if you go and try to cut a corner too quickly, and while you're dizzy, it's really hard to control the marble, so you may send it flying off an edge. Now, there are no lives or anything in the game. If you end up getting destroyed or your marble flies off the edge or something like that, he will be put back at an appropriate safe place. You've just lost the time it takes for the animation to play out. The levels increase in difficulty and take a lot of practice, especially as we get farther in, like for example this third level when you're bouncing all around and then have to travel now through a very large area full of green slime, which the green will instantly destroy your character. Now when you make it over to this area here, you're going to move up and then quickly in between the two giant ramps, you want to do a quick cut over to the lower right here so you can go into this pathway and make it to the end. After completing a level, you get a bonus for completing a level in a certain amount of time, giving you a little bit of more added time in the next level. Now, when we start off the next level, though, these things will try to pull you towards them, and they are very, extremely annoying. You're then going to catapult it across, wait till you're not dizzy, and then move down. These pillars are going to try to push you up. When they're all down here, make the jump over the gap. You don't have to wait for the pillars to launch you into the air so that you can actually get across that gap. Then at the end, just time it so you can avoid these hammers and make it through. Usually just inching your way slowly but surely through until you're able to make it to that all-important goal. Next up is the Silly Race, which now you're going from the bottom of a stage to the top, so the whole kind of mechanics of what you're really trying to do changes up. It's very easy to send your character flying off of an edge. You'll find yourself being able to do so quite easily, and it can get quite annoying. Watch out for all the enemies located here, and go inside the machine, and you'll be launched up here. Pretty simple path throughout this part, and then when you make it up here, this is where the things get tricky. These birds keep spawning, flying towards you. So you have to move around the birds and get past them, and eventually making it up the next big ramp. In the next area, go down this little ramp and just quickly go over here to the right and finish up the stage. Now is the ultimate race, the final level of the game. This will test all of your skill. Beating the end of this level is one of the big accomplishments in NES. Even though this game is extremely short, as you've noticed, as this is the final level, this level will test all of your skill. Take your time. Hopefully you have enough time built up from the previous levels so you have some extra time to work with. Wait for the slime to move out of the way before going across the gap into this ice area. Time it just right because you cannot control the marble on the ice. So what you have to do is get it so you can go directly diagonally straight down so you can make it safely. And here is the end of the game, one of the trickiest segments on the NES as you have to move your marble slowly. You're going to want to speed up probably going to be running low on time, but you have to take your time. 
Wait for the path to be built just the way you want it before trying to traverse it and make it to that goal at the end. Once you have completed the ultimate race, you'll get bonus points racked up for how much time you have, as well as you'll get negatives for how many times your marble was destroyed. You can see here I got a score of 111,420, and you get to see your high score racked up with the other default high scores. And that's it, then the game goes back to the title screen, you can start it all over again. Now let me just say, Marble Madness is not a game you're going to pick up the very first time and probably get through it. You're probably going to fail at least by the third course. It's a lot of fun. This is one of my favorite arcade ports over onto the NES, and though it is a short experience, it will definitely challenge you, and it's one of those games where it's fun to try to see how quickly you're able to make it through these levels. This is one of those games that was built for speedrunning. But with that, that's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up or commenting down below. Those things actually do help the video get seen by more people. Now if you enjoyed this arcade port, you may also enjoy my arcade port of City Connection located right over there. All you gotta do is click that footage. Now I also want to thank all the members of my Patreon who you're seeing here. Their monthly pledges are helping keep this channel alive and strong. And you can actually join them by clicking the Patreon button located down right below me. As little as $1 a month can keep this channel going. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.